In a university in St. Petersburg, math teacher Alexa falls in love with astrophysics teacher Maximilian when she finds him almost freezing to death while he looks at the stars. The couple soon marries and Alexa gets pregnant with a baby girl that Maximilian wants to name Jupiter even if Alexa hates it. One night, a group of thieves breaks into their apartment and robs them. Maximilian tries to at least make them leave his beloved telescope, but the thieves answer by shooting him before running away with their loot. Alone and depressed, Alexa decides to move with her relatives in Chicago and takes a ship to the USA. In the middle of the trip, the baby is born and Alexa names her Jupiter in memory of her husband. As she grows up, Jupiter's aunt tells her she is destined to achieve greatness and find true love. But years later, an adult Jupiter thinks her life sucks. As the daughter of immigrants, the only job she can find is being a cleaning lady for rich people, and on top of that she has to live with a big family in a small house, never having real privacy. Meanwhile on an abandoned planet far away, the three siblings from the powerful house of Abersax meet after a long time. This planet is empty because the family harvests people from different civilizations to make a potion that keeps them young. Recently their mother died and left each of them some planets, the eldest sibling Balam was the one to receive Earth, and Titus, the youngest, wants to buy it. Kalik points out Earth is incredibly expensive, and Balam leaves without a word. The next day, a hunter known as Kane appears in the streets of Chicago and is spotted by bounty hunters Razo, Ibis, Falk. The trio watches Kane use a special gadget to get through a door, indicating none of them are from Earth. They're sure Kane is hunting the same victim as them and decide to follow him. The place Kane is broken into is a clinic, and he's checking out the profile of a patient named Catherine because he can use his advanced sense of smell to look for clues. When he comes out, he finds the trio waiting for him, so Kane activates his floating boots to run away. The trio opens fire to stop him, but after exchanging a few shots, Kane manages to escape, and Razo tells her partners they should warn their boss Balam. In the meantime, Kalik talks to her servants because she wants to be part of the hunt on Earth too but she doesn't want her brothers to know about it. Balam is also talking to his people and when he hears they've found a special genprint in Catherine, he sends orders to get her killed. This Catherine person turns out a friend of Jupiter's. Tonight she's helping her find a dress, and while Jupiter is in the closet, she hears Catherine scream. When she takes a look, she discovers a group of grey aliens about to do something to Catherine's floating body, so Jupiter takes a picture with her phone. At that moment, her phone rings and gets the attention of the aliens, who immediately knock both humans out. A moment later, the women wake up without remembering what happened. In the evening, Jupiter has dinner with her family, and her cousin Vasily gives everyone their next cleaning jobs. Jupiter asks if she can borrow some money because she's dreaming about having a telescope like her dad's, but Vasily tells her she needs to save on her own. Later in private, cousin Vladi convinces Jupiter to sell her eggs for money, and he gets a percentage for the sale. The next day, Jupiter goes to the clinic using Catherine's name. While she's fooling around on her phone, she finds the picture she took of the aliens. Before she can do anything about it, the doctor calls her to the surgery room. While the nurses get her ready, Jupiter begins feeling something's wrong and wants to get out, but her body suddenly starts floating. It turns out the whole staff is actually aliens, and when they check her DNA they confirm she's the one with the special genprint, the confusion came from the mixed names. The aliens intend to kill her, but at that moment Kane shows up and shoots them all before rescuing Jupiter, who passes out. Meanwhile in a spaceship, Titus receives news that his hunter found the girl, so he sends transport to pick her up. Balam also hears about the incident at the clinic and desperately orders his people to double the security deployment. Twelve hours later, Jupiter wakes up in a strange room and immediately grabs Kane's gun to demand answers. Kane explains there are all kinds of life on many planets across the universe, for example he's a half-human half-wolf that was bred for the military, but it didn't work out. The little grey guys are known as keepers and want to kill her because of her particular genes. To prove his story, Kane shows Jupiter the gadget that opens portals on walls and his floating boots. At that moment, Titus spaceship sends a beam for them, so Kane picks up Jupiter to fly towards it. Unfortunately Balam's ships also arrive and make Titus' ship blow up. The explosion causes the pair to fall but Kane acts quickly and catches Jupiter before he begins flying away. A chase begins through Chicago as the enemy ships shoot at Kane, hitting various buildings and cars in the way. Kane takes them to a bridge, under which he hit a shuttle he stole from the enemy. Now they're safe inside this shuttle, Kane can fire back and even hide underwater when necessary. He's a good pilot, but the shuttle still receives lots of damage and Kane has to jump out with Jupiter before it explodes. At least they land safely, thanks to the boots. The next morning, Kane steals a car and drags Jupiter with him as she demands more answers. Kane explains that they're tangled in a war within the Abersax family, one of the most powerful dynasties in the universe. In fact they're so powerful that they're already rebuilding all the places their fight destructed, and the Keepers will erase everyone's memories like they did to Juniper the other day. Kane only knows Titus wants Jupiter to be taken to his ship, and that Balam wants her dead. Speaking of Balam, he uses a hologram to inspect the Keeper's memory of the clinic incident and tells Jupiter that sometimes he misses her. Then he reminds his guards that'll kill anyone who makes another mistake. A few hours later, Jupiter and Kane arrive at the house of Stinger, 
a friend of Kane's. Stinger used to be a marshal for the Aegis, a team that functions as space cops. As soon as Stinger sees Kane he begins attacking him because he doesn't want to be dragged back into his old life. The fight is suddenly interrupted when a bunch of bees begins surrounding Jupiter, moving along the movement of her hands. When Stinger notices this, he immediately kneels and calls Jupiter your majesty because bees are capable of recognizing royalty. Then everyone is invited inside and Stinger cures Kane's wounds with an instant spray while revealing Kane used to have wings and he lost them when he was court-martialed. Jupiter gets a call from Vladi and while she takes it, Kane explains to Stinger that he didn't know she was royalty, Titus only promised to pay him with new wings. Moments later, Stinger explains he's managed to contact the Aegis and they'll come to pick them up tomorrow. While Kane gets armed with Stinger's collection of weapons, Stinger tells Jupiter that Kane got court-martialed because he bit an elite person, and since Kane had been under his command at the time, Stinger got fired too. He also tells Jupiter that humans aren't native to Earth, it was the Abrasax industries that killed all the dinosaurs and filled the planet with people to be harvested later. Before Juniper can ask what harvesting is about, Kane informs them the trio of bounty hunters and many keepers are outside. Kane stays behind fighting with both guns and his fists while Stinger runs with Jupiter, but he has to open fire as well when they're surrounded. Falk finds them and pushes Singer back with a shockwave, but when he tries to get Jupiter, the bees come to her defense. Jupiter runs to hide in the cornfield, but Falk catches up to her and knocks her out with another shockwave. The keepers approach Jupiter to kill her, but at that moment Razo and Ibis show up and betray Falk, killing him and the keepers before taking Jupiter into their ship. Kane finishes off his opponents and rushes out of the house just in time to jump onto the ship undetected. Some hours later, the hunter's ship arrives at an alien city, and Kane jumps off the ship before he can be seen. The hunters sell Jupiter to Kalik's people, who pay better than Balam. When Jupiter wakes up, she finds herself in a fancy dress inside a strange room. Kalik comes to see her and is shocked at how much Jupiter looks like her dead mother. To prove her point, Kalik takes Jupiter to see a statue that looks exactly like her, revealing that Jupiter is the reincarnation of Kalik's mother, who had been 90,000 years old and got murdered. While Kane sneaks into the mansion and follows his nose to find Jupiter, he's found by the guards, and he fights them through the corridors. Kalik shows Jupiter a special pool with water that makes her look young even if she's actually 14,004. This is the potion the siblings grow by harvesting people's lives, but Kalik doesn't say it directly. She explains to Jupiter that her mother owned Earth and since Jupiter's her reincarnation, she can claim the planet for herself and join the rich life. Their conversation is interrupted by Cain, who tries to take Jupiter away, but Jupiter trusts Kalik and accepts to wait for the Aegis to arrive. In the meantime, Balam kills the general that failed to get Jupiter again and sends a new soldier known as Gregan after her. A few moments later, Aegis Captain Singh arrives together with Stinger and promises to escort Jupiter to the Commonwealth Ministry Honoris. After Jupiter changes into more comfortable clothes, Kane checks on her and they have a sweet bonding moment. Jupiter tries to flirt with Kane but he turns her down because she's royalty and he's just a dog. Eventually the ship makes it to Urus, the original human's birthplace. An android guides Jupiter through many offices and lots of bureaucratic paperwork that becomes too tedious and almost impossible to finish. To get it done more quickly, the android ends up bribing an employee and Jupiter finally gets a seal on her wrist that brands her as royalty. Afterward, Jupiter wonders why Kane is still sticking around now all it's done, and he explains Stinger believes they may be accepted into the force again if they help her. Unfortunately when Stinger shows up, he's surrounded by bounty hunters and he betrays Kane because he made a deal with Titus. Moments later, Jupiter is taken to a different spaceship and meets with Titus, who promises he'll take her back to Earth if she accepts to have dinner with him. Meanwhile Titus guards lock Kane in a cell. Over dinner, Jupiter asks about Kane, and Titus tells her he sent him back to his homeland. He also explains Kalik lied to her and finally tells Jupiter that the youth potion is made out of human lives. As he shows her his stash of potion bottles, Titus explains his mother changed her mind about the harvesting and intended to end the business, that's why she was murdered. Titus pretends he never made potions, he only rescued these bottles because he intends to finish his mother's goals. Jupiter believes him, but when Titus asks her to marry him in order to work together against his siblings, she hesitates. Meanwhile Stinger gets in contact with Titus guards to finish their deal. After they hang up, it's revealed Stinger was captured by Tsing and that she made him call to trace the ship's location. Kane is taken to see Titus and calls him out for lying to him, Titus explains lies are simply necessary to survive. He plans to marry Jupiter and then kill her so he can get Earth for himself. At that moment, Kane is shot into space as punishment for his betrayal, and on his way out, he manages to kick something on the wall. Then Kane uses his boots to break the handcuffs and grabs some of the wall debris, which turns out to be protective gear. Unfortunately he can't make it back to the ship because it escapes through a portal. The gear doesn't have much oxygen left and Kane remembers Jupiter while thinking he's about to die, but thankfully the Aegis shows up just in time to rescue him. He informs the crew they need to save Jupiter and asks for Stinger's help, so Stinger gets the chance to explain he only betrayed them because Titus promised a cure for his sick daughter, otherwise he's on Aegis' side. 
Back on Earth, Jupiter's family is worried about her and yells at Vladi for having lost her to a suspicious clinic. At that moment, Gregan breaks through the ceiling and captures them all. Sometime later, Jupiter confesses she's unsure about the wedding and asks to see Cain. Titus tells her Cain left because he attacked people again, then points out the wedding is just a contract to protect the innocent. He also shows her that he had prepared a rite of pardon for Cain and didn't use it just because Cain betrayed him. Convinced of Tritus' good intentions, Jupiter accepts to marry him. A few hours later, Jupiter is put in a beautiful dress and taken to the ceremony. Outside, Titus' fleet surrounds the ship to defend it against the incoming attack from Aegis. Cain and Stinger are still excellent pilots and fight fiercely against the enemy while Jupiter hesitates at the altar. She barely finishes her vows, and when a symbolic ring is about to be printed on her finger, she tries to take her hand back as she hears the noises of the battle. Titus forces her hand back in place, but at that moment, Cain breaks into the room and points his gun at Titus as he tells Jupiter the truth. He wants to kill Titus, but Jupiter just asks him to take her away. The Aegis ship takes Jupiter away and she takes the chance to give Cain the pardon she stole from Titus. Cain wants to bond with her more, but Jupiter doesn't want anything else to do with this. Moments later they arrive on Earth and Jupiter finds her home in ruins. Gregan is there too with a bunch of Balam's men, they explain that Jupiter must come with them to abdicate her title if she doesn't want her family to die. Singh and Cain think it's a trap, but Jupiter accepts to go anyway. Jupiter is taken away by Gregan in his spacecraft while Singh and Cain try to follow them on the Aegis ship. However as soon as Gregan's craft crosses the portal, they close it so that the cops can't follow them. Singh has to quickly turn the ship around before they get caught in a dangerous storm. This storm surrounds Balam's dominion and Cain is hesitant to act, but Stinger comes and gives him a heartfelt speech about how much he needs Jupiter. Desperate to have his own pack, Cain decides to go to the planet alone. His shuttle is damaged by the storm and his landing ends up being a violent crash, damaging the gravity hull on its way down. At Balam's dominion, Jupiter meets with him and accuses him of killing his mother, causing Balam to slap her for it. Then Balam makes Gregan almost kill Alexa, only stopping him when Jupiter accepts to sign the abdication to save her mother. However when she's about to sign, she realizes Balam will harvest Earth soon, and she refuses to exchange millions of lives for her family. At that moment, Balam's men inform him of the damage to the hall, and Cain suddenly breaks into the palace and attacks Gregan. Seeing her family will be safe, Jupiter destroys the abdication tablet, causing Balam to try to kill her. Jupiter quickly gets him off her with a kick. Furious, Balam orders his guards to kill Jupiter, but Cain is faster and rescues her by opening a portal right under her. He hides her in a safe spot while he shields her, and Jupiter kisses him before he goes back to fight Gregan. Jupiter then begins moving her family away while people on the planet begin evacuating since the broken hull makes it an unsafe atmosphere to live in. The opening of the blockage allows the Aegis to bring their ship closer. Balam tries to attack Jupiter while she's distracted, but Jupiter got a gun from Cain and shoots him in the legs. The palace begins to crumble under the effects of the broken hull and an explosion breaks the floor under Jupiter, causing her and Balam to fall. Cain wants to rescue her, but Gregan still insists to fight him and flies him out of the building by grabbing him with his tail. While Jupiter and Balam miraculously save themselves by grabbing a broken railing, Cain frees himself from Gregan's hold and continues to fight on his floating boots. He makes the beast crash on the floor by hurting his wings, then he finally kills him by putting a portal around Gregan's neck. Afterward Cain gets in contact with Aegis and gives them his location so they can rescue all the members of Jupiter's family. Meanwhile Jupiter is trying to find a way out, but the building keeps breaking under her. She nearly falls plenty of times, but after a few dangerous jumps, she manages to re-enter the palace. Balam's waiting for her and begins hitting her with a metal rod as he calls her mother, confirming he was the one who killed his mom and claiming that she had begged him to do it because she hated her life. Jupiter steals the rod and retaliates with her own attacks, but she refuses to kill Balam because of her principles. At that moment, the building finishes crumbling and Balam falls to his death. Jupiter falls too but gets rescued by Cain, who puts protective gear on her. There's no more time left, so Tsing opens a portal to leave with her ship. Cain notices this and immediately uses his boots to dodge all the falling debris and cross the portal as well. Minutes later, everyone is safely back in our solar system. Sometime later, Jupiter is back on her average routine, but she surprises his family by approaching everything with a more positive attitude. To apologize for the mess Vladi got her in, they gift her the telescope she wanted. Once she's done with work, Jupiter meets with Cain for a date. Now Jupiter has her own pair of floating boots, and Cain has his wings back. After sharing a kiss, they go flying together. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.